Hey everybody, Dave Johnson here with Aggressive Fun. Today we are checking out the repair of an anemometer on a weather station. Hopefully I can show you this one. It's right there. Because the anemometer has stopped recording. I've tried everything and so we're going to replace it with this new setup that I purchased from David. And you see where the cable goes down and it goes down the pole right here and the cable then snakes in side right here and goes to the junction box that I'll show you right now. Okay, this is the kit that you get of all of the replacement parts. I'm up here on the roof, so you have to bear with me. I don't want to have anything drop off. You get some instructions, you get a, a bag of hardware that has a critical screw here is this guy for the mounting that I'm going to be using today and this Allen wrench very critical make sure that you keep track of that then I've got a mounting I've already got this on mine I've already got all of this hardware but in order to to do this replacement part this whole kit had to be purchased there's another way you can do it I couldn't find it on their website and then mainly I think the reason is is that this whole thing is an integral unit it's this guy where these anemometer cups attach to it the sensor that's right inside of here is the one on this existing one that is bad so we've got i've got to replace that whole unit in order to fix that problem so that's what we're going to do today one small detail i've discovered uh, this hornet's nest is right there where I need to go. Nice. <clears throat> so from this side, you can see hornet's nest right there and all of my cables are right here I need to come in that hole you can see they're very active and they didn't like that I poked my finger into their little hive nest there so looking for some spray hopefully I can get them killed off Hopefully I got them. I don't want to get stung on this little project. I don't think there's any more life there, but just to make sure. This can's almost empty too. It's as good as I can do. Okay, I now want to plug in. Right here is my and. I need to unplug the right one, do a quick test. So. So which one? I'll move one over there still. Oh, let's see. Okay, now that I have that plugged in, I'm going to twist. Just to, this is just a test, so I'm going to twist this guy for the wind direction, and I'm going to twist this one for the anemometer to make sure I've plugged it into the right one. Turns out they are indicating that I got it right the first time just by luck. Changing this guy definitely changed the wind direction. Turning this guy showed that the, the anemometer is working. The wind speed changed accordingly and then stopped when I stopped. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now I will stuff the this cable through that little hole while, where the hornet's nest is. I need, to, I need to mount this guy first and then wrap it around the post, stuff it in the hole, plug it in, we're done. So here we go. So, I've got to 
undo the screw. So you undo. Okay, when I get this out, it's a pain in the neck to get it out. Okay, now I need to cut the clips here that are holding the holding the wire onto the. They are very old, so they're very brittle, and they come right off. Okay, I didn't feed that through. We're just going to cut that in a minute because they make these cables so long so that you could mount it anywhere that there's a huge amount of excess cable inside that we don't need. And on this old one, we don't care about. So, pull this guy out. So this is the old one. Still, still spins and feels good. But it's the sensor inside of here that went bad. And with our test just now, we proved that that's the case. So we'll get this old one out of the way. And the new one. So this guy goes up in there. And our handy dandy Allen wrench that we set aside made sure we didn't lose it. We used that to tighten that guy up. So it's in place now. Spins freely. You still in focus? Okay, then this one, same thing with this one. You can see it has a little set screw there. And it, there's a flat. I don't know if you can see it on the shaft there. They looks like they put the flat. The flat is on the opposite side of the screw. Put that in place. And you can see the set screw right here. I'll tighten it down. Okay. Here in Wyoming, the wind blows a lot and blows heavy duty. So you want to make sure things are tight. And they are. So that guy spins, that guy spins. We're good to go. Now, this guy, the hole that that long screw goes through is here on this end. So when you put it in place, you want to make sure that that hole lines up with the hole in the plastic mount so that you can shove the screw in there to fasten it. Okay, to get it lined up, slide it in there. Get your handy dandy long screw and you've got to put it in that hole. First the plastic hole, and it is threaded, at least on this unit that I have. It's threaded through the plastic. I put it in there until it, I snug it up, which means I've hit it. And then you wiggle it around a little bit and it will align with the hole in the pipe. Once you've done that, and it'll, and it'll wiggle around, but you can see that the screw stopped and then you're ready to screw the screw in some more. And there are a lot of threads so it takes a lot of screw and it would be real handy right now if you had a cordless. And I've now come out the other side. Now it needs the nut and the washer's back on there. And the lock washer that you put on. Okay. And then once all that's in place, everybody's happy. Okay, now, I'll quickly wrap the, this huge amount of cable. This is definitely a nice advertisement for wireless. By the way, I will never do another wired one, ever. Wireless is the only way to do this. But saved a lot of money over buying a brand new unit. So in this case, didn't have a choice. Okay, so that first position is the one 
I tested with it, it's the correct one, so I hit it the first time. So I'm going to pull in the cable right through this hole, and I'm going to plug it in right there, and then I'll go down and show you how the display unit works now that it's plugged in. Zero? Zero. Yeah, it was going. Twenty? Twelve? Zero? Heading north? Heading east? East. Northeast? North? It's north. Nothing. Oh, now it's moving east, kind of southeast. South? It's moving. Moving. Southwest? Moving. Speed four, zero, moving west, moving northwest, moving north, 1232, 12, four, zero. Did you want to be in the video? Did you want to be in the video? <laughs> you want to be in the video? Yeah? Well, you're, it's too late. You're already in it. Okay, so we'll start up here. Okay, that's a successful repair of the Davis Weather Wizard 3 wind vane and anemometer. And I had an issue with getting the weather vane to point for the display to indicate the direction that it was pointing. Their instructions manual shows that you can make an adjustment on the shaft, but you can't do that anymore because they put a flat on the shaft and the, the wind vane plastic piece will only go on one way. So what I did with the installation here is it was on a post so I could just rotate it 90 degrees. It was indicating that north was east or east was north. After rotating at 90 degrees, all of the directions lined up like they're supposed to. So if you've mounted that right into the side of a building, you're going to have a tough time doing that. I'm not sure what Davis rec recommends then since they've changed the mechanical design or if any of you watching this have seen a way that you can do that, leave a comment down below so that I can be enlightened on something that I couldn't figure out how to do any other way. So with that, hopefully that was helpful. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below uh, the YouTube video. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.